You're listening to the Quit Your Job in Six Months podcast with Buck motherfucking flogging. Listen carefully as Buck lays down a mesmerizing array of knowledge that can help you quit your job in six months or less and pursue your dream as a proud owner of a successful internet enterprise. Got a question for Buck? Go to quitin6.com slash ask hyphen Buck. That's quit the letter N, the number six, dot com slash ask hyphen buck. Now get ready to enjoy the show. Invincible. Hey, I read the first book, and I can't wait for the next one. And my question is, are you going to answer all the questions we need answering in the next few books to make us able to do what we need to do? Or are we going to have to buy something at some point? Just curious. All right, thanks. Hey, first of all, thanks for your question, and everybody listening to this, please send me some more fucking questions. You guys have sent me like five, uh, which is lame. I want to be doing more of these. And um, also, if you'd rather have a live conversation with me where we could get into it in a little bit more detail and have a back and forth, record that, like some of the other podcast episodes you may have listened to, you can email me at buckflogging at gmail.com, and uh, we can... Set one of those up if I've got time. And sorry, also, speaking of time, uh, that I haven't been putting out more content. I just, I, I've i been feeling kind of crappy. I got uh, a little bit over, overly worked. I don't know why my, my sensitivity to stress has been poor. Um, I, but I get, I get really fired up when I get a new project. So I, I started quitting six and I was like, oh, super pumped. We launched Epic Wins as well as Course Cowboy that month of May. I wrote three books that month and did a bunch of other things. And it was just crazy. And I get really excited and I I love it. And then I end up staying up until four o'clock in the morning every night uh, because that's just, I get wired and I work incredibly well in that wired state that seems to happen as soon as the sun goes down. Um, And I just, yeah, it's crazy. I'm like living the dream until like four o'clock in the morning. And I did that for a month and I just crashed and bombed, uh, which is no real surprise because the exact same thing happened to me last May of 2014. <laughs> um, I was staying up regularly till 4 a.m., working, you know, 12, 13, 14 hours a day, being retarded. And yeah, I crashed and burned and had some health problems and I, involved me basically having to take a break and get my sleep schedule back on track. So I've had to do that. I feel like, knock on wood, that I'm recovered and I'll be able to get back on track, but of course, stick to a normal, healthy bedtime and not work like a psychomaniac, uh, which is hard to do because I I do get really excited and I want to help all you guys as much as I possibly can and answer everybody's questions and build the biggest, baddest, bestest uh, you know, internet business information source of them all. And speaking of which, your question was about, is there going to be a charge for something or is it, I'm going to continue to provide free information? I will continue to provide more free information. There's going to be a free book coming out. I'll always be submitting a video here, a podcast there. So you will get some free stuff. There's no doubt about that. But yes, there will be a course launched at some point. Uh, We're shooting for this fall. The course is going to be taught almost like a live class daily for several weeks at minimum, covering absolutely as much content as I can possibly cover. 
And the standard price for internet business courses starts at a thousand dollars. So Brendan Burchard and uh, what's that one guy's name? Um, shoot, I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. Marie Forleo's is two grand. Uh, Noah Kagan has one that I think is I think it's about a thousand. I don't know the price tag on that one, but it's it's somewhere in there. Um, Rami Ramit Sethi, that was the other one I couldn't think of. I think that one starts at about a thousand too. This course is going to be a lot more thorough than any of them, and it's going to be a lot cheaper. Okay, it's not going to be anywhere in the, in that neighborhood at all. Uh, it's going to be um, probably around a third of that of the minimum price. I don't know exactly. I will keep it as un inexpensive as possible. It will probably start. The price will probably start with either a one, two, or three, and I'm not sure yet. It depends on how many subscribers we get. It depends on uh, how many people we decide to limit it to. Um, I, I don't know if we can serve a thousand people like we really want to, and we may have to limit it to 500. We may have to limit it to fewer than that. But the deal is, is that you know what we want to do is be able to provide the quality experience. Um, that, that will really help people turn the corner and actually make this a success. We're not trying to, it's not a huge money grab. We want everybody to actually pull this off. And in order to do that, uh, you know, we need everybody to be leveraging the resources that we have. And um, we need to be able to give people the attention that, that is required for them to be successful. And so, yes, of course, there's a, a charge assigned to that. Um, Epic wins. We're building a list where you guys can use as a promotional base. You know, I've already spent, um, well, I haven't spent, but I've taken on $32,000 of liabilities just to build that. And the building of that is primarily to serve you guys. So obviously there's a charge there. Um, we have Buck Books, um, which, you know, it's profitable business, but you know, obviously if, if books are going to be a part of, of the Quentin Six graduates, arsenal then hey we've got to uh you know we got to find a way to to uh, get get those promotions worked in there um and we have other things so i have my web developer and i have assistants and all of us will be working together graphic designer um we have somebody else coming in uh it's going to help me teach web development so there's there's really a lot going on and a lot going into this it just it just couldn't be free um there's just no way that we could make enough money from, you know, affiliate programs and stuff like that to completely remove the charge, the price of admission there. Likewise, we want people to know about it. And as I teach as often as I can, I try to sneak it in there that, you know, you have to have something for sale and you have to have a viable business that makes money in order to recruit affiliates to go out and tell the world about what your product or service is. And same deal here. We have to have a, a charge to where affiliates can get a decent amount to promote this so that we can spread this and service the people that we're capable of servicing. So that's the, the long-winded answer to your question. Thanks so much for submitting it. Send some more. Yeehaw! Well, how to do there, buckaroo? This here is Billy the Skid. Congratulations on Course Cowboy. I am very impressed. <laughs> Ow! You got the fart needles again, Dad? Never mind what I'm getting. Huh. Well, sorry about that, Buckster. Anyway, I do have a question, and I sure hope y'all can answer it. My question is this here. What kind of drawers y'all wear? Them long johns with the mud flap in the back? Or them thar silk briefs? What? Okay, Ruth, hang on. Sorry, Buckster, gots to go. I am the Kansas City Brothel Inspector, and I gots me a job to do. Woo! Now, now, that may sound like a silly question, but, you know, take it seriously. This is a valid question, okay? Um, what kind of drawers do we wear? Um, we, I guess, means me and Stephen, a.k.a. Willie B. Quinton, and Josh. The web developer, a.k.a. Freddy Cougar, Cougarbait. Um, I can't speak for the other two gentlemen. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, Willie B. Quinton wears mankinis. But me personally, I just I like to go natural. You know, I live in Florida. 
there's enough crotch sweating going on on a normal basis that, you know, it's not like I, I you know, some flannel in there is really going to help that situation. So I, I like to keep it clean and, uh, you know, single layer between me and the, you know, little, little buck and the outside world. So uh, that's the story there. Um, by the way, the guys, that was submitted by Adam Bailey. And Adam is, uh, we just started communicating a little bit because we connected on Facebook and he said, Hey, this Quentin Six stuff is awesome. And I've been following Buck Books and you guys are hilarious and really like what you guys do. And we chatted a little bit on Facebook. Next thing you know, Adam is writing the email broadcast for Course Cowboy. And we are currently working on helping Adam develop his own website. So almost like a, in, in like a business partnership kind of way. So, I just wanted to throw that out there that we are uh, prospecting, uh, to use a Wild West term to go with the theme of Adam's comment. Uh, we are pro we are prospecting for talented and excited individuals that we click with um, because we have lots of things that that we always have in the back of our mind. We just don't have the people to do it. So, in some scenarios. Instead of giving you information to help build your business or even giving you resources, we may do it with you. I just wanted to, to tease your your whatever uh, with, with that thought. Thanks for the question there, Mr. Inspector of Brothels in Kansas City. And that was quite entertaining. You can see why I couldn't resist but to, you know, grab this guy out of cyberspace and, and try to point him in, in the right direction. Because he's he's got some he's got some mojo about him, and uh, his yeah he's 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 amazing as Buckaroo flogging in the Course Cowboy emails. If you haven't seen his work yet, they're pretty comical. Hey, this is Nathan Pierce from Microbrewer Podcast. I'm wondering how you feel about Amazon's terms of service that say that. Uh, affiliate links shouldn't be used in email and link shorteners shouldn't be used. I'm, I'm thinking about doing an email or email attachment that's a report of the top 10 books for how to start a brewery that have been recommended on Microbrewer Podcast and I see you use these methods a lot in some of your businesses. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for the question, Nathan. Sorry it's taken me so long to get back to you. Um, hopefully I'm not too late in answering it, uh, but I have a great answer for it. Uh, just to get everybody on the same page here, because this is a very specific question. This might be a little bit over some people's heads. Amazon has an affiliate program called Amazon Associates. And with Amazon Associates, you can go grab an affiliate link and you can promote anything on Amazon. And you get somewhere between 4 and 8.5%, depending on the volume of transactions that you have in any given month. You get between 4 and 8.5% on everything that people buy within 24 hours of after clicking on your link. So Buck Books is one business of mine where we went completely ape shit with getting you know with using this tactic for generating revenue so by sending people over to amazon to get free books and 99 cent books what that does is it gets the transaction numbers up in a hurry because people buy hundreds of books at 99 cents and before you know it i've reached i believe it's 3500 units um so if you have 3500 units sold at any price you get to jump all the way up into their maximum eight and a half percent tier so that's where we get, and and there's obviously people buy all kinds of other things while they're shopping over there, not just books. They might, you know, hop on and buy some other things five hours after going and buying a book after they uh, jump through our affiliate link. So in Amazon's terms, the Amazon uh, Associates terms, they say, do not use affiliate links in emails. And of course, Every email is that we send out is littered with Amazon Associates links. So how do we get around this? What is the rule? What's going on here? Um, I actually have really good information to report on this. 
because someone from, you know, with Bug Books, we became a pretty high profile Amazon associate. We were getting up in the 20,000 a month range. And there's only four people that works in the Amazon associates department, which is mind boggling for such a big company like Amazon. But I actually got contacted directly and had a real live phone call with one of these four people. They, first of all, they contacted me because they wanted to obviously help me perform better. Uh, they have certain objectives. They want their affiliates to do things that are advantageous to them. And they thought that there were a few things and areas that I could make some improvements. And so we talked about that. Um, and then they also wanted to make sure and verify that my email service provider was in one of eight states that are approved to be putting these Amazon Associates links in. So I, I don't know if it's like a tax issue, if it's a legal thing. I don't know. I'm not a tax legal type of nerd. Uh, anytime I hear those words, my eyes just glaze over. Um, but I know that there was some logistics issue with that. And so what they told me um, if I could confirm that it was, you know, they wanted to know what state my email service provider was in. Once they confirmed that, then they would let us resume putting Amazon Associates links back into the email broadcast. So first of all, I got, I had to get to about 20,000 a month before they even noticed. Um, so everybody out there listening, odds are nobody's ever going to notice if you put Amazon Associates links in your email broadcast. B, if they do notice, they're not going to do anything. It's not like they terminate your Amazon Associates account because you breached their terms of service or whatever. That's not how it went for me at all. They were really great, um, and it was no big deal. And once they confirmed that my email service provider, which is AWeber, which is based in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is one of those eight states, so they were good with it. Um, yet another reason why I recommend uh, AWeber as just a general email service provider for people over other entities is because I know for sure that it's okay to be putting Amazon Associates links into your email broadcast while using them as your email service provider. So that's a long-winded uh, answer to your question, but hopefully that gets people's creative juices flowing because it there's a lot of businesses that you can build off of the way that Amazon Associates affiliate program works i mean think about it. anything in the world basically is for sale on amazon and you can make some money leaving links to it somehow so anyway that's that uh what was what was the other question oh link shorteners i don't they have a little thing where you can use you can shorten the links they never mentioned anything to that so there's this these amazon associates links are like a mile long but they have um a little shortener built in the Amazon Associates dashboard and you can click on that and it'll shorten it to like an AMZN dot something with like six or seven characters and uh, but I've never had any issues with mail deliverability I've never had any issues with AWeber flagging them like they would a, a bitly or a tiny URL if you use one of those link shorteners AWeber goes absolutely berserk um, you start getting all kinds of spam reports and things like that because it's kind of like cloaking links and that is, uh, you know, super red flag and their spam filters. But I've never had any such issues using that. We use the link shortener for every single link that we put everywhere and anywhere that we leave email links. Um, so it's not an issue. Let it rip. I think you're 110% safe in doing so. Hi there. Um, this is Alan. Um, I have a question. Um, how do we get from uh, corporate or the EPCM nine to five job to be starting like a independent contractor or entrepreneurship? Um, thinking of an idea. Um, thinking of an idea to start. That's what I'm like stuck with having trouble with, and uh, right now I just um, I'm reading your book and I'm reading other entrepreneurship book to create an idea and if you can any other ideas um please let me know.
<laughs> oh shit. Well, first of all, Alan, Alan, um I would think your best bet is to maybe uh travel the world as like a Zane impersonator from that Batman movie. Oh, yes, I I think you'd be a great Zane impersonator. Um <laughs> No, seriously, bro, you sound like a crazy person, but I will answer your question very seriously. And because everybody, everybody's wondering that, of course, and it gives me an opportunity to talk, which I just, I love to hear myself talk. It's the most incredible thing. It's orgasmic. Um, so, you know, how do you make the switch? I mean, that's, that's what all of Quentin Six is about and all the books and, you know, everything that we put together, all the information that we're going to compile is a how to. So yes, we're, I'm in the process of answering that for everyone as best as I can. And I cannot answer everything all in one go here, but I, I will talk to a few things that have been on my mind lately and we'll see what we get into in the next little bit here. So, all right. How do you make the transition? How do you come up with an idea? First of all, don't quit your job. No, but this is not quit your job tomorrow. This is quit your job in six months. And the quit your job in six months doesn't mean quit your job in six months, regardless of whether you're successful or not. The idea is that you become successful over over six months. And by six months, you're so successful that you can be confident enough in leaving your job. You may not be making as much money as you do at your job, but you may be making enough money to know that you're headed in a direction where you're going to be very successful more so than you are with your job and going to have a lot more fun doing it. That's the whole point of doing any of this. Um, and I would stress the, the, the fun over the money because that's, that's why I do it. And I don't think anybody is going to become absurdly like Mark Cuban rich doing any of the things that I'm talking about, but it's definitely possible to make a, a nice, um, you know, six, six figure income on the internet, doing something that you like without causing yourself too much distress and overwork. And, you know, like I said, I've, I've been overworked, but it was more by choice than anything else. But Alan, um, you know, the idea is based, the idea has more to do with you than it does anything else, right? So you have a certain set of strengths and weaknesses. So not to be a dick, well, to be a dick, because being a dick is funny. Um, Obviously, a podcast would not be a good choice for you. <laughs> um, but but obviously, I mean, I'm hoping that you have some strengths that you can utilize. And some interests, right? Because you have to be interested in what you're doing. You don't have to be because you could just be interested in making money and that could compel you uh, to get it done. But man, it just helps so much if you're interested in whatever it is that you're, you're doing uh, for your business. I mean, if you're interested in... I don't know, cycling, then, it, God, it's a lot easier to have a cycling-based internet business that pertains somehow to cycling, somehow. Gear reviews or, you know, you start a race in your local area and you use the power of the internet to, to get registrants. I don't know. But I, that's just an example. I mean, it's, it just, it's so much easier to get up and go to work when it's something that you're super fired, out, fired up about. So I would really focus on you and what you like, and what you're interested in, and what you have a little, you know, look at your skills and your, you know, the skills that you do have, and try to find a way to marry what you like with what you're good at, and if you can find a way to marry those two with some, you know, thorough brainstorming, you might have yourself a winner. Now, here's another thing I'll throw into that as well. I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I see so many people, they create, the, they create themselves as this entity. Um, let's say I'm a, I'm an expert on, I use this in one of the books on gardening. Okay. I'm an expert on gardening. Um, it's, it's kind of tough when your job is to disseminate information to people. Um, and you're just waiting people to find your information and think that you're great, that your delivery is great and that you're likable as a person and that you just have that certain je ne sais quoi, that, that whatever about you. It's not easy and not everybody can do that. It's not easy to pull off. I pulled it off with my original business, which I did with 180 Degree Health. 
But, I mean, I was, like, really loud and obnoxious and in-your-face and entertaining, and I'm, you know, a good writer that has a degree in writing. Not that that really means anything, but I certainly had practiced that craft for a number of years before I wrote my first blog post. I was already a published author before I even knew what a blog was. So I had all those things and those skills going into it, and it was very helpful. And um, that allowed me to be sort of a sole entity that people liked. And that was something I was capable of achieving. But uh, it was a hard road. It took me four years to reach a decent amount of money. And I don't think it's for everybody. And what I do now on the sites that I have now that I think are so much better and better businesses, better businesses for the average everyday person who may not be a dynamo in some area, um, is making it all about buying stuff. Now, I know that sounds a little bizarre, but, you know, you wouldn't have a physical business. Think about it like a physical business. Imagine in a in a mall, there's all this stuff for sale. People are walking through shopping for stuff, looking for stuff to buy. And one store that you create, all you have is information. You just have one book that you wrote <laughs> in an audio program or something like that. It's it just it wouldn't make sense. Nobody would advise you to have a business like that in a mall. All the other businesses are about buying stuff. People go there to buy stuff. They go there to shop. And I think that's a huge advantage. So making bug books, you know, it's a discount spot where people can go and shop for books. And we have Course Cowboy, and you go and shop for e-courses. And we're thinking of ways of sort of almost, you know, semi-franchising this and thinking about all different kinds of things that people can shop for. So if you're interested in something cycling related, like I don't think you should blog about how awesome biking is and then hope to sell them something later on out of left field, you're better off just making a site. Instead of making cyclingisawesome.com, make um, cyclingdeals.com. You know, gear review, cyclinggearreview.com. I don't know. Maybe these are bad examples, but again, it's got to be centered around buying stuff, and it's got to be, it's got to do something for them. They have to find out about the best stuff, so they're getting great information, or they're finding out about the best deals, perhaps. I, you know, something along those lines. And that's what uh, that's why I love about these daily deal sites. They're almost infinitely replicable, even just in the in the Kindle book promotion sphere. There's several viable ebook promotion businesses. I mean, there's several. There's and there's room for plenty more. I mean, we were making, Buck Books is making thousands of dollars instantly when we only had like three, four, five thousand subscribers. I mean, it was nothing. We were a tiny little speck on the map and we were still carving out what I think is a suitable living for someone who is trying to make this transition from working at a job to doing your own thing. So, um... You know, and as you're doing it by yourself, it's it's pretty easy to reach the point of success. Uh, it gets a little tricky when you're expanding and you're hiring people. And, you know, I've run into some issues with Buck Books, in fact, where, you know, we I overhired a little bit. And, um, you know, the, the profit is, is tiny, even though the revenue is huge. Um, it's fine because I spend less than an hour a week working on it and it still brings in money which is pretty awesome but um it, it's you know you get presented with a whole new set of challenges when you go to expand a, a successful business and you think the sky is the limit and there's no way you could be you could run into trouble but you definitely can't you definitely can't a lot of people kill their businesses when they're trying to go take them to the next level um, but as an individual reaching that first level of success it's it's not unobtainable in, in any regard. If you pick, if you get an idea about something where people can go and have more of a shopping experience, which enables you to sell a lot of stuff and talk about products for sale and stuff to buy all the time, and it doesn't come off as distasteful because that's what they're there to do. It comes off as distasteful when they're there to read about something that has nothing to do with anything that's for sale. If they come there for health advice, and then you try to pitch them uh, 
I don't know, a Fitbit or something like that. It just doesn't come off quite right. But if they're there to shop for health and fitness stuff and you tell them about a discount on Fitbit and you drop an affiliate link, they're like, awesome. So glad I found this site. These deals are kick-ass. You rock. As opposed to, well, gee, that was weird. We were having a totally normal conversation, then all of a sudden it turned into a sales pitch. That was awkward. So anyway, that's just a, a few things that I, I'll throw out there. Um, the idea is a very important part. You should definitely spend a lot of time developing it. And I see so many people having so many problems with it because it is hard to decide. It is really, really hard to decide. And there's a thousand good ideas out there. I mean, it's infinite. I could think of great ideas for internet businesses all day long, one after another. That's the, the coming up with a good idea is easy. It's coming up with the right idea for you that you will do, that you will follow through on, that, that plays to your skill sets. That's, that's the trick. I think that's really the trick. So I will leave it at that. I'll let you folks be on your merry way, but please send me some goddamn questions at quitn6.com slash ask hyphen buck. And um, also email me at buckflocking at gmail.com. And maybe we can sit down on the phone and record something and slap it up on the podcast as well. Happy to do that for anyone free of charge, knowing that I can repurpose that hour of my time spent or whatever it is um, by putting some more content out there on the podcast. All right, peeps, I'm out. And um, yeah, I'm going to go work on book four. See if I can have that out sometime in October. Peace. That's all for today's episode, but you can go back and get four free books plus an unfathomable shitload of free resources and insider information at quitin6.com. Go register there now at quit, the letter N, and the number 6.com. Here we go. Thank you.